What's up everyone? I'm here today at the North Carolina Museum of Art in Raleigh, North Carolina to do a little birding. The art park is a superb bird watching spot with 164 acres of rolling fields and dark forest to explore. I've heard that the sunflower field is in bloom, so let's head out and see what we can find. As soon as I got out of the car in the parking lot, I spotted this gorgeous red-tailed hawk sitting on a lamppost. So cool! I crept up closer, but he didn't seem to mind my presence one little bit. Mostly he just sat there, watching and listening to the smaller birds around him making a fuss in the bushes below. Red-tailed hawks are one of the most common raptors in the U.S., and there are about 16 subspecies found in North America. They are generalists both in terms of the habitats they occupy and the animals they prey upon. Small rodents are typical prey items, but red tails also take birds, reptiles, and just about anything else of like size that makes itself visible. That goldfinch better watch his back. Have you ever wondered how to tell an indigo bunting apart from a blue grouse beak? Both species are found here in Central North Carolina. They share a common habitat preference too, open fields and thickets at the edge of woods. Thus, these similar looking birds are often confused for the other. Here's a quick list of points to consider when trying to assess the idea of these azure-hued feathered gems. Male and female indigo buntings lack wing bars. Adult male wings are entirely blue with black points. Indigo buntings have a much smaller pointy beak and the head of an indigo bunting is rounded, smaller, and more delicate than that of a blue grosbeak. beak. With grosbeaks, beaks, the males have two rusty-colored wing bars. While not as pronounced as the males, the tan-colored females will also show two brownish wing bars. Similar to northern cardinals, blue grosbeaks beaks have a large, heavy, triangular-shaped bill the top edge of which is nearly forms a straight line into the forehead. The head of a blue grosbeak beak is large and squared off, giving them a decidedly block-headed appearance. When it comes to size, the average blue grosbeak beak is nearly twice the weight of an indigo bunting. This is something that you'll notice if you happen to see both species in the same day. You're likely to find both of these beautiful bluebirds here at the art park, but another good place to spot them is at the Mid Pines Road Dog Lake on the agricultural campus of NC State University near Yates Mill Park in Raleigh. These American goldfinches put on quite a show. It was great to spend a few hours out there in the field watching them feed on the flower seeds. During the spring and summer, adult males sport bright yellow plumage with a black forehead. The females are dressed in a softer tan yellow tone with a matte black olive back. When the wintertime arrives, the males will lose their bright yellow feathers and turn towards a dusky wheat color. Primarily seed eaters, they'll also eat aphids and caterpillars in the summer while raising their brood. That being said, they prefer to eat the seeds of ragweed, thistles, sweet gum, sunflower, dandelion, alder, and goldenrod flowers. You can attract these vibrantly colored birds to your own yard by offering them thistle or niger seeds in a specialized feeder. With these seeds contained within a tight wire mesh, finch feeders let you present their favorite food in a way that mimics how they would extract the seeds in the wild. Check out this pretty little female orchard oriole. I had not expected to see one of these feathered gems so late in the season. One of the first species to leave North Carolina during fall migration. They'll be heading out soon, so this is a real treat. One of my favorite woodland birds is the Eastern Towie. This female came out of the woods to say hello when I approached. Isn't she beautiful? I was so excited to see this white-breasted nuthatch at close range. It was awesome just to watch them hunt insects, pecking and prodding in the bark crevices for a snack. These little guys can be found in forest, woodlots, groves, river woods, shade trees, and will visit your bird feeder too. They are birds of the mature forest and are more often found in deciduous than carnivorous forests, although you can find them in either one. 
White-breasted nuthatches are also a common sight in our backyards here in North Carolina. You can entice them to visit your feeders with black oil sunflower seeds and suet cakes. Well, that about wraps it up from the North Carolina Museum of Art. If you like this content, hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, and don't forget to check out birdwatchingnc.com to stay up to date with my latest birding adventures. Until next time, my friends, happy birding!